Hello, everyone, boys and girls, girls and boys. <laughs> Cracks me up when I say this. <laughs> anyway, um, easy to make me fun, uh, make me laugh. Um, so this is the second part of the video. The first part we did, well, the boys did, um, the Sabrina versus the What Puppy, the What Puppy, the 50th anniversary speaker. This is part two. So now the boys are going to compare <coughs> the What Puppy to the Sasha V. So for those of you who didn't see that uh, video, Mike will link the description, uh, link it in the description. Uh, some technical details first. Uh, the What Puppy is 38.5 US uh, for the standard finish. The Sasha V is 51,000 US. The What Puppy uses the same drivers as the Sasha, which is quite interesting. So while the cabinets are slightly different, um, they're using identical drivers. So two 8-inch woofers, one 7-inch mid-range, and by the way, this is the same mid-range as you see in their top-of-the-line speakers. Quadra mag with Alnico uh, magnets, and the one-inch uh, tweeter. Uh, the What Puppy is 89 dB sensitivity, 4 ohms, minimum of 2.87 at 86 hertz. So be careful. You do want to make sure your amplifier has good current, especially if you like to play a lot of bass and like to play it at loud levels. Uh, rated at 26 to 30 kilohertz and is 160 pounds each side. The Sasha V is 88 dB, so 1 dB less sensitive. Also rated nominal 4 ohms, but at 2.36 ohms, so even lower in impedance at 82 hertz. So the same goes if you want to use uh, but just make sure your amplifier is capable of some good current uh, in, in the mid bass. And then 20 to 32 kilohertz, 245 pounds. So it's, it's a sumo wrestler compared to 160 pounds, um, uh, what do you call it, lightweight MMA? What is that? 160 pounds, something like that. Um, the system that we used, uh, at the same as before, AccuFace E5000, Lumen P1 as a streamer with the internal DAC. Um, uh, and although I won't be giving much of my own uh, feedback, I also listened to it with the Gra Griffin Diablo 333 because I was breaking it in, so I was curious to see what it sounded like with the Griffin. All right, uh, Lewis, why don't you start? Okay, um, I used um, my usual s um, um, songs, which we had done for the first review, the What Puppy versus the um, Sabrina X. So to make it consistent, then I, I use the same songs and um, played both um, speakers. Um, tried and true to my test, um, I used Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band Sing Sang Song, um, wherein that um, this song is well recorded. Um, some people will say it's audiophile recording, but it brings out a lot of instrumentation and um, the bass, the clarinet. Clarinet is a beauty. Um, it's it's really good. Um, Excuse me for a second. Who was that big band clarinetist? Um, in, in the early days, it was Benny Goodman. That, there it is. Benny. So he actually did the song uh, sing, sing, yeah, sing. Right. Yes. But um, it's changed now to sing, sang, sung. Yeah. But it's the same song, um, just done um, over. Um, we call it a cover. Um, yeah, when you mentioned that song, it started playing yeah. in my mind. I yeah. couldn't get it out of my mind. I said, oh, I got to ask. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the tonal qualities of this song, the bass, the clarinet, the strings, um, all come out. It showcases your um your setup um your kit it, it it really brings out a lot of instruments and that detail uh, very very good another song which i use a lot is uh, grover washington's um take five which is probably the best known recorded jazz song by Dave Brubeck but this one here has a lot of sax um, I like Grover Washington from the early 70s um, I remember when he came out with one album with a song called I Love You Porgy which is not an original but it was a cover by him so 
throughout the years, I've always listened to Grover Washington. Unfortunately, he died very young, I think in his 40s or maybe early 50s. But um, this song is really good. Um, the saxophone comes out so clear um, on the two sets of speakers. I won't tell you which one I like better yet. At the end, I will um, when we're doing our wrap up. Um, the third song, I, I, I moved to a uh, male vocal, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., um, which I think is one of the best um, singers of the Rat Pack. And the song was If I Never Sing Another Song. And the instruments, the violins, everything in this song just brings out everything you need to know. And the tonal qualities of the, 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 the two speakers are just fantastic um, in other words I would just say the, the two speakers are BBB big bad and bold and I'll pass it on that's it <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass it on I'll give what, you my wrap a, up at what the a end. freaking tease <laughs> huh? I will give this you this is wrap terrible up. <laughs> Look, I, I'll okay. keep around eh? I don't know. oh my god all right so before Paul starts let me reintroduce him for those of you who haven't watched the last video Paul is a, fri a friend and a client he uh, joined us for our last video and I think according to the comments everybody loved uh, his uh, uh, his uh, participation, loved his feedback, and certainly all of us here really enjoyed his fresh perspective, loved his energy, and uh, also his his um, information uh, because um, Paul has owned the Sabrina and currently owns the Sasha DAW, and so while he is quote-unquote biased in terms of Wilson, obviously because he bought them, um, he is not necessarily biased in terms of either of the speaker, whether it's the Sasha V or the Wat Puppy, because he doesn't own either of them. So it'd be actually quite interesting, interesting to see whether he actually likes the Wat Puppy or the Sasha V. All right, take it away. Yeah, totally. Thanks. So, and, and I, I'm not biased towards either. I don't own it I, either. You're correct. I do have a nostalgic connection to the Watt Puppy for sure. And you talked about that, Adrian. There's a, there's something very classic about it. But I also love the Sashas because I have those. So I'm kind and of the Sabrinas and the Sabrina. Those. I'm biased towards all. I think is more <laughs> accurate. <laughs> so I didn't do what Lewis did, where he used the same music. I I went in a totally different direction. And for a little insight behind the scenes to the viewers, like I, I, you can't see it, but I took maybe like. 30 pages of notes between listening, doing the two editions and comparing the speakers. So it, there's wait, wait, wait. so much we, you we have should, to We go should into tell this, the backstory. So uh, um, oh, <laughs> Paul had come in a week ago <laughs> and the plan was he was going to spend the afternoon, morning and afternoon listening. And I saw him come in, said hi, went back to me off my office and I saw him chatting with Mike. And then hour, two hours later, I come up, <laughs> I see him, he comes. And so we start chatting. Uh, for a good 20, 30, 40 minutes, then he looks at his watch and he says, okay, that's, you know, that's it. The day's all screwed up. Like day's hour. all screwed yeah. up. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, between you and Mike, my day's all gone. I said, what are you talking about? You didn't get a chance to listen? He says, no. I said, oh, no. I, when I started talking with you because I thought you were done. He says, no, no, no. I said, well, go go back and listen. He says, no, no, no. I've, I've got all, all, all kinds of other things all scheduled. So he had to come back a week later to redo this, and this time I saw him, I just went straight into my yeah, office, <laughs> and that's when I just left him alone. So <laughs> that's the back, that, that's how dedicated he is to this process, and so thank you. And he did spend, when he was listening, he did spend hours in this room. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're doing the watch thing again? Yes. Well, he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the, the, the watch guy, See if you can spot his watch. Yeah, yeah. I already did. did, 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 did. We're gonna make it a bit of a challenge. You okay. Make it too easy. Okay. They gotta work for it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So um, I, I, when we started this review for these two speakers, I thought the Sabrinas and the Sashas, or the Sabrinas and the Wap Puppies, would be significantly different. I wasn't too worried about it. I mean, physically, they're so different. They have different drivers, different uh, cabinet designs, different materials. The Sashas and the Wap Puppies are pretty new as far as like they were released within a year of each other so the I think sort of the the mentality of Wilson is going to be very similar like the evolution of where they are as a brand the materials are the same the drivers are the same so it's kind of like I was like oh my goodness how how different are really these two going to be 
And so I, I wanted to start with something I'm really, really familiar with this track, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. I'm really sorry. It's called Largo Al Factotum, and it's from The Barber of Seville. And specifically, it's from an album called My Favorite Opera, which ha it's like the it's like the big shiny tunes of opera almost. It has just a bunch of greatest hits. And I know for you opera, opera aficionados, you're thinking, oh, there's, there's more sophisticated, more elegant ones out there and all this kind of stuff. Yes, but I'm not speaking to you. I'm trying to talk to the person who's never really tried opera and is a bit intimidated or afraid of it. Try this track. It's just really fun. It's digestible. And it really shows you what Luciano Pavarotti could do. His dynamic range, his vocals, his technique is all there in full force, but it's it's easy to listen to and it's toe tapping. And for me, I'm a nerd, so I air conduct with it. And I even sing along. But when it starts, Pavarotti comes on from, from actually the deep back of the stage and far right, and then he walks to center stage. And with the Watt Puppies, he def definitely does that. With the Sashas, he came from further back, and he came actually even further to the right. Like the dis You could physically tell very clearly that the stage was deeper and wider, just from that beginning 25 seconds of the song. And then when Pavarotti gets going, if, if you've ever heard a tenor, a really a professional tenor in person, there's something awesome about the strength that they can produce from their diaphragm and their whole body. It's not, you, you might have heard really strong singers and all this kind of stuff, but when you see a tenor live, and especially a world-class tenor like Luciano Pavarotti, it, it just brings you to your knees. And I've never heard a speaker that could accurately reproduce that. And the Watt Puppies really tried, they couldn't do it. But the Sashas, they couldn't do it either, frankly. <laughs> you know, like, I'll just say what it is. They really, really tried. They came a lot closer. And I haven't heard some, something like this with, like, the XVXs or whatever. But, you know, the Sashas did do a better job of this. And this is something very, very special to try to reproduce. So it's no judgment on either speaker that they fell short. Most do. Um, but you could see the dynamics with the Sashas was stronger. The soundstage was deeper and wider. It just had more breadth. The next song I listened to was called Feel So Blue, and it's by Lafayette Leak, and it's such a wonderful blues track. He starts off and he's playing the piano, and it just, the musicality of it, the instrumentation of both was just so on point, and it was lovely. And, and Leak comes on and he starts singing in, in the way that he does, and if you don't know Leak's voice, he, he, he doesn't project from his chest or even really his throat. It's almost like from the middle of his face, kind of. And the Watt Puppies, it came more from his sinuses and the Sashas came more lower down in his throat. There was a distinct shift in the tonality of how they were presenting his voice. And I'm not saying one's better or worse, it was just, there's a difference in tonality there for sure. And this track really brought it out. And so that was kind of an interesting thing. And I think it might be one of those things too, where with some tracks, and I, I didn't, I don't have a good example of this, but I bet you, you might have a hard time sometime, or some, Sometimes the Sashas might present guitar strings as nylon, and the Watt Puppies might present guitar strings sometimes more as metallic. And I think that if I'm trying to articulate it in the, in the difference of what you might hear, and I think there is a definite tonal shift there. Um, the third song I wanted to just throw the kitchen sink at it, and this is kind of a nuts track. Um, it's by a band called The Who, and you probably, oh, I know The Who, everyone knows The Who. No, no, I'm talking about the Mongolian metal band, The Who. <laughs> oh. Right? You know, and like, who's that? And it, people go, oh, the Mongolian metal band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the band, they do like sea shanty covers and hymns and war songs. That band? No. They use animal sounds? No. Oh. They're also throat singers, if you're interested. So the, the song I use is called Wolf Totem, which is like their, their big song for them. And it's nuts. Like, it's loud. It's huge. It's, it's aggressive. And it just throws everything in the kitchen sink. And it's a song that a lot of speakers can kind of get tripped over their own feet with because there's so much action. Both speakers handled it flawlessly. Like they're real, these are both world-class speakers, frankly. But the Sashas, again, were able to just lay everything out kind of in an easier sense and separate everything out and just present it in a nicer way with everything further back. The background singers are further back. The ambient noises are further apart from you. There's just a, a, a very distinct difference. And like Lewis, I want to go through a brief summary at the end, if there's a chance, to kind of, I'll break it down between the differences of the two speakers that I that I heard, more specifically. <laughs> the Mongolian. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really Check called the Never They're really called the Who? The Who, H-U, not the Who. Oh. Oh. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh my but they're really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But oh. They're actually really cool. You may not love them, but they're pretty cool. Okay. All right, Mike. 
Okay, well, I am an actual Who fan, as in W H O. So that actually was one of my albums that I get to talk about today. Um, so the Who, the British band from the '60s, they came in the second wave, second wave of the British invasion to America. Um, the album is Quadrophenia. Uh, they've had a lot of success uh, with Tommy. They've had a lot of success with Who's Next. They uh, come out with a concept album. Uh, I believe at the time it was actually available in Quadraphonic Sound. Mm -hmm. Possible at the time. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of their bigger albums in terms of orchestra orchestration, in terms of composition. Um, at times it, it can be... Uh, a quite complex the mix can be quite complex uh, they recorded it in a studio but the actual board was uh, it was a mobile studio that they borrowed from the Rolling Stones and again produced by Glyn Johns who did some great albums with not the best recordings uh, uh, he's, he's got some clunkers in the, <laughs> the the Who catalog the Rolling Stones catalog the Led Zeppelin catalog and I'll, I'll leave it there because People get offended when I say that this, the Led Zeppelin has some bad recordings. And well, they you're do. right. And they do. But, but you see right. in the comments now, watch. <laughs> <laughs> you got to buy the Japanese version. That's no, uh, no, it on doesn't wax. matter which uh, one you Bad is yeah. bad. Bad is bad. <laughs> um, so the first song I'm going to talk about is the first track of the album. Technically the second. The first track is uh, just uh, ambience. Uh, the second track is The Real Me. Um, it's really bombastic. Uh, the bass is very upfront in this song. Uh, Pete Townsend essentially just plays power chords through the whole song. Um, it's w uh, the Who didn't really groove like Led Zeppelin would groove, um, but this is one song where they really did the the bass and the drums really were very very tight. On certain systems, you can definitely hear, and as a bassist, this is what uh, what I listen to is the bass. John Entwistle. He always had a little bit of uh, grittiness in the bass. And uh, the Watts versus the Sashas, there was an air in the grittiness of the Sashas as well as the placement of the bass was where it was supposed to be. It's quite forward in the mix. On the Sashas, the, the soundstage is a little bit more compressed. You really couldn't hear uh, front to back as well as you could. Did I say Sasha yeah. or Watts? You said on the Watts, <laughs> the image is uh, the the sound stage is a little bit more compressed front to back, and on the Sasha's it opened up quite a bit. It, it was actually quite noticeable to me. The grittiness in the in the bass was quite forward. Um, in addition, as well, uh, John Entwistle, the bassist, he also plays uh, French horn. Uh, overdubbed many many layers uh, it's 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 very thick um, and again on the watts it kind of um, it was kind of a uh, homogenous and on the sashas it, it bloomed a little bit it opened a little bit where you could kind of hear the the levels in the overdubs and you could kind of differentiate the you know this is before computers so they weren't nailing the start and stops all the time. Uh, and you could kind of hear those little imperfections coming through on the sashes. The sashes just seem to have this this clarity in the sound stage that lets the instruments uh, breathe a little bit more. I, I will say this. It, we're, I'm t when I say audiophile differences, it, it really is audiophile differences. They are They are more close than they are dissimilar. The, the differences between the Watt and the Sasha are much closer than the Watt and the Sabrinas, which we, when, which we just did. Um, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, audiophile differences. So I'm, I'm really nitpicking here to find these differences. But nonetheless, the Sashas performed a little bit better in terms of allowing me to hear in this complex mix these, these different levels. And, you know, sometimes the guitar was in the back, sometimes it came very forward. Sometimes the vocals were in the back, sometimes they came forward. And the Sashas did a really good job in conveying that, that sound stage. Because the Who was a band who, just like Zeppelin, probably the Stones, uh, 
they would record live off the floor. So what you're hearing, 90% of that, is them all together playing at the exact same time. All the mistakes are there. Um, and then they would go in and obviously do, do the overdubs. Um, so in this track, essentially, there is the overdubs is, is essentially only the horn section. The band is on full force uh, in this track. And the sashes conveyed it in a way that allowed me to hear the, the room that they're in a little bit more. It allowed me to hear some of the overdubs and the separations uh, in the actual tracks. It allowed me to hear the grittiness in the bass, which made it more articulate. Um, I felt as well for the vocals. Now, Roger Daltrey isn't the greatest vocalist. This is some of his, his better vocals. And you could really hear the raspiness and the grittiness in his voice and the sashes. It was a little bit more subdued, a little bit, I felt a little bit smoother on the, uh, on the, on the Watts. And I've been listening to this, to this album since I was a tot since before I was in kindergarten. So I know, yep, I know that it can, uh, I know that his voice uh, can be portrayed with the, the grittiness that's actually there in the recording. I'm gonna leave it at that because I know we're, okay, we're so gonna run out of time, yeah. Um, I will just give a very, very quick summary of my own personal impressions because I think the boys have done an incredible job. Um, my. As I mentioned earlier, I listened to both the AccuPhase E5000 as well as the Griffin, and the first thing I noticed was that both speakers uh, clearly, uh, no pun intended, showed the difference yeah. of the AccuPhase and the Griffin. It was very, very obvious. Um, it also um, gave me a taste right at the beginning when Griffin was starting to break in how good the Griffin was going to be. I, it was um, uh, first through the Watt Puppy. Uh, I was just blown away by how good the Griffin was already starting to sound. And then, of course, later on as it broke in more, I switched over to the Sasha. So both speakers are incredibly transparent, very neutral, very, very good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a little bit from both. Um, Overall, in terms of refinement and ability to discern more, the Sasha V is better. Um, Paul mentioned this. Um, Mike also did. Uh, Lewis, he's going to <laughs> tease us until the very end. I think it comes from his teenage years when he was petting with girls in the, in the car. <laughs> Just tease and tease and tease. Um, so, Whoa. yeah, yeah, comments below. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Cancel me. I don't care. <coughs> um, then... Uh, um, but what's fascinating is that there was a lot more similarities than differences. Again, Mike pointed that out, and I, I think uh, uh, Paul as well would agree. There are far more uh, similarities than differences. It's just that I, I was thinking about an analogy I could use, and again, don't get triggered. Um, the the um, the what puppy reminded me of a really lithe, very agile car. It's very fast to respond. It it. it does nothing wrong. It's a lot of excitement. There's a lot to enjoy. And then the Sasha is more like, okay, let's put a supercharger in it. Let's bore out the engine a little bit more. Let's get more performance out of basically the same thing. And mm. just let's just mod it. Let's just go, go a little bit crazy and mod it. And that's what it reminds me of. Everything that's essentially the Watt Puppy, just bigger, more, more developed, uh, more Herculean, without being a completely different speaker, like potentially the Alexia is, in the sense that suddenly it's a ginormous, large speaker. So uh, again, in, in, this, in simple words, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, any, any room that the um, Sasha will work in, the Watt Puppy will, unless the room is substantially bigger and you want to really crank, then the, the, the Sasha will do a better job, will go lower, will have more bass power, will, will give you more refinement, but at the same time, you're gonna need even better amplifiers because I think the Sasha with the impedance dropping down to, what is it, uh, 2.36, that's a punishing impedance, especially at 82 hertz. It's a, it's a very, very common frequency. It's not like 40 hertz or 32 hertz. This is right in the base uh, range. So just be aware of that. All right, let's go back to Lewis and get his final conclusions, Mr. T's. <laughs> okay, 
So being big, bad, and bold is definitely the Sasha V. Tonal qualities, I will pick the Watt Puppy over the Sasha. Oh, what a yes. twist. Wow. What, a, what twist. a twist. I told you I had something <laughs> coming. Um, for me, even though everything seems to be the same, I found that the, I, it must be the crossover doing this that I preferred the tonal qualities of the Watt Puppy over the Sasha. But when it came to bass, oh, nothing can touch the, um, the Sasha V's. It's just bad. <laughs> it will just rock your socks. And in this room here, I had the, <laughs> the ceiling shaking. So the um, suspended ceiling So what here. are you saying? If you had to pick one, what would you pick? It, depending on the size of my room, I would have to pick shoes. There is no clear cut one which I would say one is better than the other. Okay. Um, they are very good speakers. Um, everybody, uh, as one, uh, one of our customers who have the Alex and the, um, the Sabrina, he says that the, um, the Watt Puppy is the junior to the Alex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that is a very good comment mm -hmm. to make. Yeah. So there is not, as you, as they said, there's not much differences between them, but for me, the tonal qualities of the Watt Puppy is maybe because it's newer. I don't know, but I still I like the the Watt Puppy. Okay, well that's fair. Yeah. Your but, turn, Paul. Okay, so my, my <laughs> analogy. I didn't want to do another car analogy. Uh, Use a watch analogy. Yeah, no, Freak <laughs> people out. What, what Trigger is, them. For, for Go me, ahead. It's, it's it's big dog, little dog. Oh, okay. Right, and if you've ever been out for a walk at night, or maybe you have a dog, and, and you're walking, and, and two people meet on the street. And one has a, a little kind of lap dog, and the other has a Doberman. What's the interaction between the two? The, the little dog is like, it's barking, it's snarling, and it's yapping, it's pulling on the leash. And the Doberman will just sort of stand there. And it doesn't need to react, it doesn't have to do anything, it doesn't have to flex. And I think the Watt Puppies, for me, were very much, look at this, listen to that, over here, what's going on here? The, the sounds were very articulated in space, but they were smaller. It was a more of a highlight on everything. They were, little dog, look at this, grab your attention, right? But then the, the Sashas, they came in and they just presented it like nothing. Like it's just, Effortless. everything was there, but it was just like like the Doberman. It just didn't have to tell you that it could kill the little dog. It just <laughs> knew it did. And I think that was kind of the, the biggest contrast for me. I mean, the Watt puppies for me are more first row in, in their presentation. It, it's things, the soundstage actually bleeds a little bit out in front of the speakers. At least that's what I heard. It was, it was more like, uh, grabbing your attention. Uh, it wasn't aggressive. I know people are very concerned about, oh, are they aggressive? Are they grading? They're not like that. But they're more demanding of your attention. They say, sit down, son, listen to this. The Sashas are more mid-hall. Everything's further back. Everything's more kind of into the into the space and into the stage. The Sashas are more dynamic. They've got deeper bass. Uh, you know, the images are, are bigger and fuller. And as a result, they're a little bit less precise just because they have more physical space as opposed to these smaller points within the room. So for me, those I think are the key differences. I do think the tonality of the Watt Puppies is shifted up. And I think it's one of those things where if you're really, uh, if, if you like that detail being very deliberately presented to you, the Watt Puppies are your speaker. If you're a person that maybe wants to more just lean into it and just let it flow, then the Sasha might be more more your choice because I think they're more effort effortless in their presentation. So if you had to choose one, which would you choose? You know, when I first heard we're, we're trying to the get Watt a conclusion. Puppies. These guys, you know. They, they okay, so hold on a second. So when I first heard the Watt Puppies, I was like, I'm going to get rid of my Sasha yeah, and get yeah, these. These are amazing. Yeah. And then I heard the Sasha V's, and I was like, oh, maybe this is the way I go. <laughs> but in the end, you know, I'm very, very happy with what I have. And I'm, you know, but I, 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 I think it's going to come down to your room. I think it's going to be a big thing. I think room synergy is a, a situation, and the, the Sashas are imposing. Like, if you don't have a big room, they're going to take up a lot of it, if not all of it, type of thing. Um, f for me, there was the Sashas. Like for, it was, it was but not actually, a. Just, it was just a to pull race. the thread a little bit. Yeah. When you first bought the Sabrina, I remember we had this conversation. You said you were specifically choosing the Sabrina because yeah. the room was quote unquote small. Yes. And and there were uh, uh, concerns about also decoration because you had built such a beautiful room. You didn't want the speakers to yes. overpower. 
the, the, the beauty of the room. So much for that, huh? <laughs> then you got the Sasha, right? And, and the Sasha is essentially the same size as the Sasha V, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, and the room hasn't changed. So uh, you're a perfect example of, of this sort of situation. Given that the room hasn't changed and the Sasha is a substantially larger speaker than the Sabrina, uh, do you feel that the Sasha, in fact, um, requires a, lar a much larger room based on your experience between the Sabrina and the Sasha at home? You're not going to like my answer, yeah. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I think yeah. my Sashas are too big for my room, frankly. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they are a little bit too big, but I love them. <laughs> you know, I what are you yeah, gonna do, yeah, right? No. So that, but yeah, I do. I do think that potentially in my space, I think the room synergy might be better with Watt puppies versus Sasha because Sabrina's did have better room synergy. Mm. And so behind the, so for the viewers at home, I actually have a my room is kind of an odd shape, and so I do have a, a balance issue because there's a wall on one side, it's four feet away from the right channel, but there is a wall there on the other side. The wall is like. 30 feet away, <laughs> yeah. it's like real far. So there, there is, and so I actually have to boost my left channel up uh, like two and a half dB, which is pretty significant. And wow. it does, it messes with stuff. And at the beginning, I didn't, I couldn't figure out what the problem was because Sabrina's didn't have that issue. Er, like all the images were dead centered. And it was, it was so odd because there's a specific peak around a thousand hertz, right? Where just the image would, would just shift to the right. And it was the weirdest thing. And I, anyway, it took a long time to figure it out. And it was actually Mike came to save the day and he, he deduced what was going on, so. Acoustics. Yep, acoustics. Okay, the, the Mike. The room is just as important as the speakers. Yeah. <coughs> um, oh, Sasha's for sure. Um, if, if you have the means, the Sasha's uh, just perform better. Um, uh, you know what? We, we have a client who has Sasha's in a small little room, or had them in a small little room. They were they were fine. They they were fine. He's got even bigger speakers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they're fine too. Um, there's nothing yeah. just wrong with the watts. Yes, yeah, just to, just to add to the thing there. Uh -huh. He loves that person. He does. Yes, loves he does. Loves yeah. the watt puppies. And when I say small room, I mean you could literally. He he's got Alexias now. You could you could touch one speaker and and just do this and touch the other speaker. And then the walls beside the speaker are only a few inches away. But nonetheless, this still sounds fantastic. Um, there's nothing wrong with the watts. If you, if you have the means, the sashes are, are, are definitely better, but not miles better. Um, the watts performed as well as anyone can expect. Uh, even better, to be honest. Um, they're fantastic speakers. The fact that they use the same drivers as the Sasha, uh, they're they're more similar than they are dissimilar. Um, but nonetheless, there are certain traits I love about the Sashas. I think I mentioned uh, the Tool album in the last review. Uh, Undertow uh, is the name of the album. Lots of drum rolls, lots of big, heavy drum rolls. The Sashas were able to control them. They were a little bit uh, out of control on the watts. Again, audiophile differences. Um, the sound stage on the Sashas uh, was much bigger, uh, front to back, side to side. Um, I will say this, Paul touched on the imaging. The watts did, I, I thought, uh, perform better on the imaging. Um, okay. I, could, I could pinpoint things a little bit easier. Yes. Yeah. And I think that goes to the sound stage of the Sashas was just was quite a bit bigger, but Sashas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sashes well, is. there you have it. Everybody <laughs> hated Wilson's. Yeah. We're going to start switching over to JM Labs or <laughs> Focals or JBL soon. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're quite happy with well, Anyway, thanks for watching. my Sir Win Vegas. That's yeah, right, we'll D9. See. Then Gotta then have we'll those D9s. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for watching this. Uh, comments below, would love to watch. Uh, I read your comments as always. Um, if you've had a chance to hear the Watt Puppy, what do you think? Uh, did you like them? Did you not like them? Um, what do you think of Paul's second <laughs> visit? Would you like him back? I would. I think the boys yes, certainly would. Sure. And certainly we are going to have more guests as well. I think this is a great uh, situation where we get to hear from our clients their unbiased opinions. Uh, and as Paul will uh, tell you, at no point did we tell Paul what to say. Uh, um, in fact, we encourage him to be as, as frank and honest as possible. 
So, uh, thanks for watching this. If you have any questions, email below info at audioexcellence.ca, and we will see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye, -bye.